We've so far looked at half cells and putting those together to create a cell. We've also looked at the voltage of those. And part of that experiment was also asking us to work out a theoretical value for that. And we're not sure how to do that yet. To do that, we need to know about things called standard electrode potentials. They're sometimes called reduction potentials or standard reduction potentials as well. This is because of how they're calculated. The first thing I sort of need to remind you about is that as humans, we make up scales that make sense to us. For example, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius and the freezing point is, or melting point, is 0 degrees Celsius. So we've chosen that's a 0 to 100 scale and then that's how we've come up with the Celsius or centigrade scale. So we've decided what temperature means. Then using that same scale, we've then extended that to mean uh, sorry, to explain the average kinetic energy in something and use the Kelvin scale to do that. All right, so a lot of scales and so on are determined by us as humans. So they're not, while well, they're based on science, they're arbitrary. Even time is a good example. Electropotentials are yet another example. We have to choose what our zero mark is and then go from there. So what's being decided is that what's called the hydrogen half cell is going to have a voltage or standard electropotential of zero. So if we put it on the left hand side of any cell, then we can find that these voltages must be the electropotential for the other pairs. And a couple of things need to be kept the same. One is that we need to have it at 298 Kelvin. So that's 25 degrees Celsius. We have to have one atmosphere pressure or 101.3 kilopascal and all solutions must be at 1.00 moles per litre. As well as that, we must work with pure substances. And as you've probably seen in our experiments, there's sometimes a bit of corrosion and so on on our metal electrodes. So we don't always achieve these things, which means that we don't always get the values we'd expect if we were to do this. So a standard electropotential basically tells us how much voltage, I suppose it's easy to say, would be generated when it's in the half cell with, sorry, when it's in a cell with the hydrogen half cell. So for copper, when copper is reduced to copper 2 plus, along with the hydrogen being oxidised to the hydrogen iron or hydronium iron, 0.34 volts is generated, positive 0.34 volts. That means the electrons are flowing from the anode to the cathode as we'd expect and so on. And we'd expect that because copper's not a very reactive metal. So we'd expect that the copper 2 plus would be reduced to copper. We see that in most experiments with copper, sulphate, copper chloride and so on, with more reactive, what we call more reactive metals like magnesium, you see the copper being deposited. So the ions are being reduced. So it's not a surprise that that's a positive value. Now I mentioned magnesium for a reason. If I set this situation up, the hydrogen half cell with magnesium and magnesium ions, I get a negative voltage, a very negative voltage. And what I'd actually observe is that the magnesium is turning into magnesium 2 plus, so it's being oxidized, not reduced. So if I get a negative value, it means the electrons are just flowing the opposite way to what we would expect, having the anode on the left and the cathode on the right, which is our standard setup. This means that this oxidizes much more easily than this reduces. So we've got something that's a very strong reductant here. We've got a, a relatively good oxidant in copper 2 plus here. Easily reduced. Negative value means easily oxidized. The last one I've shown here is with the iron 3, iron 2. And this sort of shows why the... Um, sorry. So this is just to show you that you can have two things that are both in solution. And we just use carbon as our electrode. And this is plus 0.77. So that's showing that iron 3 will reduce quite easily to iron 2. Now that's not normally what we observe in nature. We not normally observe that iron oxidizes all the way to iron 3. So there's more happening than, the, than just this. But however, that still does tell us this is quite a good 
oxidant because it can reduce quite readily. The data I've got there is all from page 50 in your books. So if you want to see some typical values, you'll see that there. If you want to see a more tidy diagram of the standard half cell, standard half cell, which is the hydrogen one, that's on page 48. Okay. So just to recap, standard electropotentials are sometimes called reduction potentials. In other words, how easily can these things be reduced? Okay. So the values, if they're positive, suggest that they're things that are easily reduced, so relatively strong oxidants. If the numbers are negative, it means that they're not easily reduced. It means that they're more likely to oxidise. And this is a good example here with magnesium. We, t we get these values by putting them with the standard half cell, which we've just arbitrarily decided is our zero. We've just chosen that it's zero, just like the melting point of water is zero degrees Celsius. It's just an arbitrary decision. One thing I forgot to mention earlier, the symbol is E with a little degree sign, which just means standard conditions, and these are the standard conditions. These three bullet points here, 298 Kelvin, 101.3 kilopascals, and 1.0 moles per litre. And the unit is one you've probably met before, which is a volt, or joules per coulomb.